Okay, so this video is to give you some insight into the AP Physics 1 course. I'm the teacher, Mr. Watt, and I have been teaching all levels of physics for 25 years, the last 11 here at Rebuff. That includes both AP on level and ICP and conceptual physics courses. I look like this. And what do you want to do in AP Physics 1? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to prepare you to take that AP test in May. And if you are a junior, you have the option of taking AP Physics C, which is a calculus-based course. You can watch the video on that, starring Mr. Ellis. We want you to be able to master scientific inquiry and experimentation, which is pretty much true of any science class that you may take. Mastering mathematical problem solving is also an important part of this course. Developing laboratory skills and reasoning, as well as understanding fundamental physics concepts in all of these units. Here are the units that we are going to be covering in AP Physics 1. They include one-dimensional and two-dimensional kinematics, forces and Newton's laws, which is a huge section of it, uniform and non-uniform circular motion, orbital motion and gravity, work and energy, impulse and momentum, angular kinematics and dynamics, which is connected to uniform and non-uniform circular motion. And then finally, our last topic is oscillations and simple harmonic motion. I expect that in the class you will have three different types of assignments. Homework, which is the smallest portion of these, and these are weighted grades, but there is also laboratory work, and then the largest portion of your grade is going to come from your exams and quizzes. We usually have a topic or a unit exam after every section. You should expect to spend at least one to two hours at home per class period on class assignments and study. That's actually very important to understand. If you are planning on taking this AP course, you should understand that there is going to be a lot of homework involved. The AP exam is composed of two parts. The first part, you will get 90 minutes to take 45 multiple choice questions. And then there will be a short break, and then there will be 90 minutes for five free response questions. The free response questions come in two types. There is a longer question uh, that they suggest taking 25 minutes for, and there are two of those, and then three shorter questions that they recommend taking about 13 minutes for, um, and there are three of those. So it totals out to about 89 minutes. But there are two sections, and those two sections are weighted equally. The class is going to have to be going very, very fast in order to cover all the curriculum. And we design it so that it can be completed with about two to three weeks before the exam so that we can focus in those weeks solely on test preparation, going through some practice exams, going through the types of questions that are asked, how to recognize them, how to answer them. If you are successful, you'll be able to concentrate on the task at hand. You'll be comfortable with conceptual explanations as well as mathematical reasoning. You'll be able also to write out answers, not just in your head, but to say them. So what advice can I give you for this course? First off, you are expected to be self-motivated, have a mental acuity, need strong collaborative skills, and you need to be organized. There's a very common theme here, and that is that this is all on you. You are expected to do all the work here. So, if you are a successful student, these are the sort of attributes that you will need to have. You should have a strong mathematical background and a familiarity with both algebra and geometry, as well as trigonometric functions. While trigonometric functions are not actually part of the AP Physics 1 curriculum, according to College Board, they are necessary if you want to have any sort of success at the AP Physics C class. So, it is part of the curriculum that I have built into this course. And that is trigonometric functions are going to be part of the summer school assignment that would be given out. You are expected to work on that assignment on your own. It basically walks you through the whole concepts of sine, cosine, and tangent, as well as how they apply to what we call vector math. You should be able to keep up with classwork and homework without regular prompts. It is not up to me to keep you on your toes. You will be keeping yourself on your toes. As a college-bound senior or junior, that is something that would be expected of you. You should be able to be comfortable working independently and in groups. There are both kinds of work being done in our class. That includes in labs and on homework or in classwork. Not on exams. Working independently on an exam is, of course, the natural, the norm. You should be taking initiative on deciding when additional help is needed. You can feel free to contact me whenever you want, but it's not going to be up to me to come find you to say, hey, I notice that you're not doing so hot. You take that initiative. I am here to help, I am here to support, and I am more than happy to do that, but it's up to you to decide on when that needs to be done. Communicating regularly and effectively is extremely important as well. 
and I would expect that you would prioritize assignments for this class over other classes. This is a very fast moving class where there's a lot of material to cover. Um, if you decide that some other class is going to be more important every single time and you're coming to tell me that you just don't have the time to do the work in my class, it would probably be at that point where I'd say then perhaps you need to reassess whether or not you belong in this class. Now, I am always available for help if you need it. I am always willing to work with you if you need it. Feel free to contact me if you have any further questions. My email is jrot at burbuff.org, or you can just chat at me either way. And uh, other than that, feel free to uh, play this over if you want to. Thank you very much. Enjoy your night.